but yeah, it's like hard. You don't, you don't know what you don't know, right? That's one of those things. And it's, that's where the collaboration of like, all right, let's flow everything out and like everyone maybe swarm on this and what did we miss? What scenarios, what edge cases are we missing here? So that, that piece of collaboration is really helpful as a designer. So this one's also interesting. Oh, okay, real go. quick, sorry, because um, this one's this one's interesting as a bad example of, or a, a and thing we could have done better at iterating. Because typically, I feel like we have too much in that first iteration, and with this one, we kind of didn't have enough in that first iteration. We're saying that we we missed something in that first iteration. Um, just an observation. No, no real, uh, <laughs> nothing really beyond that, but it's, uh, it's a little interesting um, compared to some of the other uh, examples we have. I, I, I was just gonna say, I also think it's interesting that like a lot of these issues have come up, like you iterate to get feedback from customers quickly, right? And in this case, we, we didn't show anything to the customers. As far as I'm aware of, no one in the wider community raised any issues with the security and looking through the issue and like linking to where the concerns came from has to do with the fact that we have confidential issues that might have keys and the security issues descriptions and then when we want to make them not confidential and public like after it's been fixed we don't want any of that information to ever be traceable so it's like we we raised the problem for ourselves but we didn't iterate with customers so i'm just wondering like if there's something in getting it in the hands of a select group of customers more quickly to get feedback more quickly, you know, um, or at least like involving them in the process. So like a lot of times we build things for ourselves and not for our customers. So I don't I just notice that trend too. Gabe, did you say that you had the issue up? Uh, yeah. Can you share it? Well, this is the one about the sensitive information and the link to the original one is in the uh, top. So one of the things I was wondering, like I, I put it in this section and I, I should probably move on, but um, so I picked these two issues, not really because I thought that, not because I thought I could pick out ways we could have iterated better, but because there are issues that we expected to get done in one milestone and we didn't. And I thought that would probably people might have some idea why um i'm wondering like when we get an issue like say health status health status was an interesting one because it's top of mind because it was i believe 12 9 we could have we could have possibly delivered something in 12 9 and we didn't um we we took it forward into 12 10 i could be wrong i could be a milestone ahead there but um what we could what we started with was editing health status in the sidebar and then showing the health status somewhere like in the epic tree or whatever um and i remember like asking you keenan i remember asking um you know can we ship this in the sidebar alone and you were kind of saying well it doesn't really deliver any value in the sidebar but it kind of conflicts as well with something we have in the handbook which is does it make things worse and if it doesn't make things worse you know just ship it so what i was wondering is like what would be the strategy for a pm to add that to a release post like would you if we had just shipped it in the sidebar would that be a release post item? Would we then announce that we had health status, but it wouldn't be health status, right? It would just be on issue health status. It would be total health status. Yeah, in, in retrospect, you know, maybe maybe that was the wrong call on, on my part. Um, but we also, we had, all, we had a lot in flight and I think it was kind of, I think there was also just the like, well, if we delay this, it drops a little bit below the line and we can move some of the, like the roadmap stuff. So, but I, you know, if we just look at that in isolation, then that, that would have been the wrong call and we should have just pushed the issue status out on its own. And then, yeah, we, we could have, right? We could say, hey, we have individual issue status. That's, that's what release post worthy. And then the next follow up is then now you can aggregate it at the epic level. There's counts. Here's the view. We could have walked into it. So I think that's, that's good feedback. and. Um, you know, looking at that decision in a vacuum, yeah, I would have probably made the different choice now looking back. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like I I agreed with you at the time. Um it's just what it's just watching those uh videos on iteration, like it just moves things into a different frame, right? Like I mean <laughs> they they sort of promote iteration at a really, really fine level. Like and when when you watch that and then you you move your your frame you kind of look back at that 
decision and I kind of think well actually yeah it would have like fit completely within that frame to delete that or to ship that because it didn't make anything worse it provided a tiny amount of value and I'm kind of wondering like what would happen with the release post then like would we announce that yeah, I would you know I I kind of taken a, a slightly different approach in that I would have wanted us to iterate on it that way like behind a feature flag and if you slice it up into like I'm going to add this thing to the, the issue sidebar first the next most valuable thing is this and then at some point you can kind of feel like okay this is at a point now where I think there's a, a minimum amount of value to the end user so now I'm going to put it in the release post right like so you slice it in these like vertical feature slices and you only do one at a time and then like at some point I think you can realize okay well this is at least doesn't make things worse and actually makes things just a little bit better. And that's when I would put it in a release post. Um, yeah. But that's just me. Yeah, no, I, Gabe, I think I agree with that. And I, to John's question that he asked in the doc, like he said, does the release post inhibit shipping earlier, less valuable features? Absolutely, in my opinion, right? And so you could see us just constantly iterating and delivering as things become ready. And then PMs and, and EMs and UX decide like when, to Gabe's point, when you get to a critical mass of a given feature that you think is worth talking about, then you make a release post. And the release post then, then simply is a, it's a marketing function, right? Like it's a talk about PR function versus a, the actual canonical release notes for a given period of time. I will add one caveat to that because I completely agree. But when you're releasing something new like requirements management, the guidance I was provided, and this actually makes decent sense, is we don't want to release incremental things to get to minimal we or viable. We want to make sure that whatever we provide in the initial thing has something the user can actually see, which is why the requirements management has taken long enough to get out necessarily. And we're still not delivering what I would call minimum functionality. We're just simply at a viable stage of being able to you know, add requirements. But the point was we needed enough there that they could actually see it. If it's, if it's incrementing on functionality we already have, I completely agree. When we're introducing something brand new, we have to be careful not to release something that's half-baked so people get a horrible taste in their mouth for it up front. So you almost need to be cognizant of when you release it into the release post and when you sort of market it to make sure that there's enough there that you have something positive that people walk away going, oh, look, this is a great first iteration, not this is completely half-baked, like I'm not going to look at it again. Kind of thing. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And I think then it's just the discretion of what is put in the release process to the PM or whatever that is building a feature. And if you don't think that it's ready enough to talk about, then you don't put it yeah. in the release post, right? And we keep iterating as a team until it is. But yes, in general, smaller pieces into release posts is not a bad thing. I love that question, John. Which one? Well, the one you asked. The, About the, the release post. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was just trying to get an idea of um, the so, this, you know, because we're I mean, we're circling around like iteration in NBCs, right? So like if you if we go down to the third question, John, like where we talk about confidential ethics, right? And where we had a thing. And I, uh, the discussion was like, well, all right, let's split it up into functionality, right? So like, okay, instead of having confidential ethics a thing, it's like, well, you can create new ones, you can toggle existing ones, et cetera. We split it up. And then when we actually got into the minutia of how this would happen, we now have something that theoretically might not be able to be done in a single release. And like, what do we, how do we approach that? Because there is, and this is something I think it's become more and more imperative to me, and I think you know, I like the conversations we have because we're getting there is, you know, the iteration is not just a product manager task because right? we can talk about functional, right? But um, I am not equipped, nor will I ever be in, in an imp position to talk as an expert about how complex the data, the data work is going to be or the backend work is going to be. Um, and so when we kind of peel back a layer of the onion, we, we find out, well, now this is a lot bigger. Well, we run into the, okay, we need to find an MDC that we can do in a single release to drive value and it's valuable enough to talk about it as an MDC. But how do you do that when a lot of what we need to do is requiring some very deep seated database work. And I think you even made a comment that every piece of functionality we add actually makes additional ones more complicated because we have, we're expanding the data structure. And I think I don't have a good answer for that yet. <laughs> and it's kind of scary. Yeah, I mean, me neither. But uh, but I did think one thing was interesting in the interview between Sid and um, Christopher 
um, two things in that video, but one of them was really interesting. I think it was Sid said like, um, like product managers can allocate engineers time, engineers can veto that allocation. So, um, you know, and I think what they were getting at was basically like, you can say, here's confidential epics, here's my proposal. And you've, you've kind of scoped the feature down as small as you possibly can. The engineer can then say, veto it and say, um, this can't be done in one release. And that's the point at which you kind of work together to continually shave it down until it fits into, into one release. Like, so, um, so in that one, yeah, it's interesting because the, a lot of the iteration videos say that we should have something that can ship in one release, right? So it's like, well, if it can't go in one release, what can we take away? And that's why I thought that one was interesting because you, can't, you start getting down to the level of what if we just shipped it in GraphQL in the first release? Like what if there was no UI? So now there's no dependency on um, you know, UX and maybe we could, you know, shorten the dependency on front end and now we just have database and back end and like but is it useful i don't know how many people are going to create a confidential epic right but even if you can yeah. create it you can't view it right so that's right <laughs> yeah no i did i really did appreciate that interview though because i do like the idea i you know i think it it empowers the engineers to be able to say no this is not broken down correctly or no this is the wrong approach and i think that's really valuable feedback i'm i'm happy to receive that and i actually welcome that because again to keenan's point we can break the features down by value drivers or by um customer you know view but it's very difficult for us to understand on the back end or the or the front end what is the minimum step we can take on the back end? Um, and then that's where these conversations can lead is, well, okay, if we take this minimum step, does it deliver value? And like the GraphQL example, well, in that case, it doesn't look like it will deliver value. So can we, can we then talk further and figure out how we could make it a value delivering feature? It's a great conversation to have. Right. Now, the, the next question immediately is, at what point of the cycle should we be having that conversation? And I think this comes into the, why this is complex now. And, you know, Justin, I'm going to let you hear this one. Like, as PMs, we talk about things we want to have in a release post and a kickoff video that's public and on the internet and watched by many people internally. But this is a great example. Hey, we talked about working on confidential epics. Now we, we you know, peek behind the curtain and we realize it's a much bigger problem. Now we had something out there saying, Hey, we're going to do this. And now we're definitely probably not going to be able to do it in this release. Like it just puts this contention because the kickoff video is this forward. We're trying to think where are we going to be in 30 days? But the reality of how we're trying to build things and the, because of how we try to iterate on things and when we do planning breakdown, the, the confidence at which we speak in the kickoff video seems a little bit kind of contrary to what the reality is. And I'm still well, trying think, to find balance there. Looking at the timeline, we're supposed to be making, having those conversations with the engineering a week before our release kickoff, right? Mm -hmm. Like the planning breakdown type stuff and mm -hmm. like those, all of those trade-off discussions. And I don't think that that necessarily happens. Like I, for me, it's more like ad, ad hoc being like, okay, I think we're going to start working on this thing soon. Can we get a, like, a, you know, a, a, how are we going to implement it? You know, and it'll be like, conversations back and forth and I'll go do some other things and come back a week later and there may conversation may be over may not but um I don't know like that's kind of where I don't like looking in the, 30 days is too big of a batch size so like thinking about queuing theory you want to keep your batches as small as possible um and I would like I would rather have conversations about how we can do vertical slices like that deliver an increment of value um and like I linked in the question to to like uh article about it but it's the kind of thing where i would rather focus on this and less on the kickoff video um like in having these conversations with engineers like how can we really like write a vault like all of our issues instead of them being split on function or split on let's do the whole graphql api and then we'll do this other thing over here but like you literally have one issue that is the entire slice of the stack um even if it's like literally click a button or uh like you said the, you can set the issue status in the sidebar and that's it and maybe just one status not three but one you know mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Well, I think that's where I'm almost an advocate of having multiple kickoffs and do them as a feature kickoff. I realize that this go flies in the face that we don't provide Eric what he needs to do our, our global kickoff and all that. But I would much rather have kicked off requirements management by itself with the MVC we're talking about. And then as we iterate on that, we'll have a second short one, two minute kickoff for the next feature we're doing, like the next piece of that feature. And that keeps our kickoffs fresh and it keeps, I think it would be more collaborative because then engineering will be able to see that and say, okay, this is what we're working on for the next week. Let's say if we go back to the batches being smaller, this is what we're working on for the next 10 days, as opposed to trying to plan that 30 day batch that inevitably is going to run into issues where we need to tweak or modify down the road. But and then that's just me. Yeah. So let's, um, yeah, let's think about how to propose uh, an iteration to the kickoff product kickoff itself and see if we can find a way that doesn't make PMs feel like they're trying to, they're going to be held accountable to deliver on what's exactly said in a kickoff video. Cause I think that's the, the rub here. Um, and then however we want to go. And I, you know, I like the vertical feature slice concept and like how we want to go break things down from there is fine. But I, yeah, I'd rather disambiguate the, the video that Eric has to present from like what the, the plan team is doing from a process standpoint. So we'll take that and we can go open an MR, start a discussion on it. Yeah. I just feel bad right now because I keep softening the language of my kickoffs to, well, we're going to be working on the following things. Well, because, that's, you know, I, that's what I need to do. Yeah. Maybe we need to say that. Maybe that just, it, 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 you know, I don't know if we're going to change the entire kickoff process for all of GitLab, but maybe for plan as we iterate here, um, that's how we take it from a PM perspective. Like we just well, talk about, yeah. Hey, here's what we're thinking about prioritizing for the next cycle. And then if iterations happen, they happen and that's okay. Yeah. That has been a great discussion. Thank you. Um, to, John, we can loop back to question two real quick, I guess. Yeah, sure. So yeah. Does anyone want to suggest any updates that we can make? I know you just uh, suggested one there, but the thing that sticks out to me, for example, is that I recently polled the team on whether they wanted to continue to split, um, to split waiting every month or not to split it. In other words, to pair up. So both groups, uh, project management and then the portfolio and certify teams to wait everything. Uh, I took a look at it this month and there were like 40 items, 40 ready for the milestone, 40 in planning breakdown. And that seemed like a lot of work. And I can't ignore the fact that many of the team voted to actually split the work this time and have project management people wait project management stuff and portfolio and certify people wait portfolio and certify stuff. So maybe there's something there we could do where we split the workload along domain expertise and then try to move move it back each milestone. So I think on the product timeline, we're supposed to get the issues to wait by the fourth of the month, but that never really happens. And that's fine, but if we can move it back like a little further each month, and I'm wondering how we could do that, maybe by getting engineers involved earlier in the breakdown or have milestone ahead breakdown for a little while. Like, so in other words, like we have issues we think we're gonna tackle a milestone ahead and we start to break those down as well i don't know any thoughts i mean i'd be personally very happy to have less stuff that needs weights on it in that bucket at any given time if we could have it be done on a more frequent basis and i don't know if that makes it easier for your engineers or not so again this goes back to what makes the most sense but i would much rather get weights for two or three things every week then have to queue up you know 10 or 12 things that somebody has to then sit there and spend three days churning through because i feel like we're going to get better more accurate weights if they're not under a burden to complete by a deadline maybe that's incorrect uh feel free to take it as you will but i would much rather somebody spend you know an hour or two each week tackling one thing and really understanding it and getting it I don't want to say right because I don't think they're getting it wrong now, but getting it diving deeper and making sure they're confident and having a higher increased confidence than having this list of a bunch of things that they're trying to just churn through for a day. Yeah, I would rather see us <laughs> continuously waiting things, right? And so like the if we're working towards being more Kanban driven, it's a pull system. So like that's why you have 
should have work in progress limits for your planning breakdown as well and your scheduling and you don't pull anything in to get weighted or broken down until there's room to do it in the, the stream basically so like i think that doing that would prevent these like giant batch sizes of waiting things that then like may or may not be super accurate and may or may not ever get done you only wait the things that are going to get scheduled because they got pulled into that queue or that process and then as soon as they're done they're going to move into the next process so it's like a whole system downstream which is where i would like to see us go um not like a batch system that we're doing now that's just me yeah, and just Gabe, you had also mentioned somewhere um, around weighing bugs. And I, I feel like a lot of the weighting that's done right now is, I don't know percentage wise, but I feel like a lot of them are bugs that engineers have to go through and wait. I don't really see a lot of value in weighing bugs because by the time someone's, by the time an engineer is doing the investigation um, to figure out how complex it is to really fix a bug they can probably just go in and, and fix it at that point. Um, I don't know how you all think about that, but I would be, um, I like in the past where we just either haven't weighed bugs at previous places I've been, um, or we just put like a default of one weight to those. I, I've never advocate. weighted bugs before. No, I would actually advocate for post-mortem weighting of the bugs. Basically to your point, go in, investigate them, figure out what needs to be fixed at that point you can fix them the only reason i would advocate for them throwing a weight on at the end is like oh this took me a little bit of time you know go back to the weighting scale and put what it took you so it's an after the fact it's simply from a metrics perspective to understand how much weight we're pushing through on a given release because if you're doing four bugs that are weights one and two that's taking away you know four to ten you know weight out of features and I think we just need to make sure we're accounting for that somewhere or else we're going to see really odd graphs when it looks at productivity and, and velocity. I, I actually like that. That's the point. Like the way that I've always done it is you never wait bugs or chores or any like technical debt. You only wait features or like in that the weight represents customer value units. So you see if it's fluctuating, then like, you know, uh, uh, something's wrong like are we producing too many defects are we like uh whatever and then it kind of warrants investigation of like how like your velocity is the representation of not like how much you deliver but how many customer value units you are delivering right and that's a perfect um, way of doing it because that way you're basically capturing you know um cost for quality and everything else in there because effectively that's taking your velocity and decreasing it if there's too many bugs you're seeing that negatively impact your velocity and that's your cvq measurement so we are over time, but what if um, what if we opened MRS thirteen pages with some of these as suggestions to discuss them with the team? So one of them being like we don't wait bugs, another one being perhaps we move away from the monthly or milestone um, uh, waiting of issues and move more towards um, the person that will ultimately or the people who will ultimately pick up the issue wait it um, when it's in plan and breakdown. And we just copy people in or ask them to do so ad hoc. Yeah, I think opening some MRs is a great plan, a great forward step for this. What do you think, Donna? Yeah, I think, well, we should definitely continue the conversation. Um, and I think having MRs on the team pages is a great place to, to do that. Um, yeah, and we can discuss further in the MR. The only concern I have with trying to figure out who is going to work on an issue earlier on so they can contribute to the breaking down and weighing is that it kind of, I don't know about discourages, but um, like it, it, it removes some of the flexibility we have um, for kind of collaboration or for other people to um, pick up issues within that larger initial issue or epic. Um, but again, let's let's talk about that in the in the MR. What what if we yeah last idea? What if we got rid of the uh, the planning breakdown and the scheduling lane, and you just had ready for development, and you left everything there unweighted until a team 
was available or a person, and then they picked it up and estimated it and started working on it. Pretty crazy cool. I mean, ready to develop. I mean, we might need to change the definition of what ready for development means. <laughs> well, backlog. I mean, that's traditionally what's been like, here's something we need to get done in the backlog. And like that way you do it just in time. Like I want to start thinking in terms of like how do, it's wasteful if we estimate things ahead of time and they don't work on it for a long time. So how can we do everything just in time? So we just estimate only when we need to, right? Which is right before we should start working on it. Um, I don't know, just a thought. So how would you know what to allocate for a milestone if you couldn't see how complex the work was? Just or advocating not doing the milestone allocation in the same way. I think that's what the PMs are trying to push is I don't like trying to do it all at the beginning because then it's usually you don't have all the data. I'd rather do, you know, add things to the milestone on a week by week basis. When somebody runs out of work, we say, okay, let's add it to the milestone. Let's pull it, wait it, add it to the milestone. And then basically the milestone is a line in the sand. This is where we got, this is what's done. This is what's in the milestone. Pre-planning the milestones feels very artificial based on all of the other agile work we do here. Um, but again, that's, that's sort of my thought. Yeah, right. well, I, we're on the same page here. The problem is the stakeholders we interact with need some level of information about what's coming down the pipe so they can close sales. I think that's what, what what I did previously when I did extreme programming is once a month we did release planning with the engineers where we talk about things in an epic level, right? Not necessarily the granular, here's everything we're going to get done down to T, but here are the themes. And then we would like agree on those and put some rough, rough order of magnitude estimate on it. And then each week we would do iteration planning. There was literally only an hour. We would demo what we did the week before. And then we would talk about what we want to commit to getting done this week. And we would break those stories down estimate them and then like work that week and just redo that cycle. So that way we were only estimating things in granularity just in time. We were only committing to things in a week at a time, but we were still progressing towards our themes. Um, so it's one way we could approach it. Let's think offline how we uncouple the, the sort of stakeholder release post cadence from what we're trying to do here as a team. I don't have a good answer right now, but I'd rather us do the right thing for the team. And then I can figure out with you guys how to, how to back into what, whether it's sales that needs information or Eric or Scott or whoever. Um, but I'd rather us feel unencumbered from that going forward here. So just ignore it and we'll have to solve for it later. Sounds good. All right. Bye. Thanks, everyone, for your time. Yeah, thanks, everyone. Have a good.